Hello, and welcome to The Lord's Last Play, our new podcast to bring you everything about varsity at Durham College. Today, I am here with Scott Dennis, our athletic director, and also Scott Barker, the athletic director from Ontario Tech. How are you guys today? Uh, we're doing great. Thanks for having us on the show. Of yeah. course. Thanks I can so miss having the two most important athletic people here for <laughs> our first show. Oh. Um, just looking forward to this year. So we were just talking about back to school, all of the teams here for training camps and tryouts and all of the good things that come with that and Campus Cup coming up. How are you guys feeling? Yeah, we're uh, we're excited for the start of the season as we always are. It's uh, I would say it's my favorite time of the year to see the athletes come back and the students start to come back to campus. So. It's definitely a busy time of the year with training camps opening up and all the administrative side, the processes that go with that. But uh, it's certainly uh, certainly worth it to see the the rekindling of the spirit on campus and the excitement that comes with the uh, the start of the season. Yeah, you mentioned the spirit and the Campus Cup is where you see the spirit on full display with the blue and the green, both fan bases going back at it, uh, back at it, back and forth. A little bit of a rivalry on campus now. Scott and I. We don't want anybody getting injured that game. That's the big thing there <laughs> yes. uh, for for the season. But uh, we, we get the rivalry, and that's good. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be another big event. And we also hope for no rain that day as well. So yes. no rain on the Tuesday. No rain, good Cup. weather. Yeah. I saw in the schedule that we're also having a pep rally, so that's cool. I think we have a really unique opportunity on our campus to have the two institutions, so it makes for a lot of good programming and a lot of fun. And it's cool to see Campus Cup return in the tradition that we've built and then also new traditions that are coming forward with our esports teams and our basketball teams and I love that we get to have this rivalry across campus so I think it's really cool um, what are your predictions for this year <laughs> like uh, like Scott said no injuries is yeah. number one um, but I think when it comes down to it I mean the the predictions are they are what they are I mean it's more about the students and having a fun night with uh, the kickoff to the season so I mean obviously when you're in the heat of the moment you want your your side to win like you would in any competition but uh to your point earlier i think the the biggest win um is packing that facility in that field the pre-events with all the you know the free barbecue and the the activities and the games that go on this year we're we're showcasing the the brand new seating with the bleachers yes. so that's all installed now so it really is turned into a a significant event over the course of the uh probably the last what seven eight nine years that we've been doing this where we you know, think back we started on a, a grass pitch that could barely hold anybody and now we're at a full really a full stadium that hosts a, a great event that sort of concludes the orientation piece on campus so I mean my prediction is obviously the Ridgebacks win I'm sure Scott's <laughs> be the Lords but uh, we're more about having a fun night with the students on yeah. that side yeah for free t-shirts free food as you mentioned free activities there's going to be instagram booths things like that so a, a lot of fun will be had by all the the staff and the students that come out to the game let's talk about the facility expansion so if you mentioned we have the new bleachers what is our new seating capacity over at the field uh so the new bleachers that went in uh are just under 800 seats and so on top of that we have our, our regular 200 i think it was with the old bleachers so that's uh so we're close to a thousand now that we can fit seating in uh in vasos field and that's um been part and parcel with a bit of a legacy project with the university and their national championship for the soccer that we're hosting this year mm -hmm. so uh that happens in november so we were excited to be able to uh to add that to the facility i think going back to your point about the uh, how great it is to have both campuses being able to work together or both schools being able to work together is that we can benefit each other with these kind of facilities and these kind of growth um, through those different channels of, of uh, facility legacies. And if you take it back a couple of years, the pavilion was built. Uh, yeah. Lots of picnic tables. That's where the barbecue is for home games. Yes. So a great place to watch the game with a little bit of shade as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's looking really good. I, every time I drive by on Simcoe Street, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's looking better and better every day. So I'm really excited. Can you tell us a little bit about Nationals and your hosting? What plans you have for that as well? Yeah, so it's uh, November 7th to the 10th is when the actual games are. Uh, the championship itself is about a week long, and we've got some community, community initiatives that are planned within that. Uh, but the eight, eight top teams from across the country will be here in November to... Uh, to compete for the championship and we're uh, we're really hoping to get some great turnouts we've got uh, a strong promotion and ticket strategy in place so we're very happy to say that both ontario tech and dc students will be able to watch those games for free um, and then we've got uh, a 
lots of engagement opportunities for them there. So I would say if if they are, if there's you know, the soccer fans out there or just the sport fans out there, it's we're we're knocking on wood for for not too cold a weather, but because uh, mid-November it could be a little chilly. But certainly from a standpoint of uh, competition and, uh, and and watching some great soccer, it'll be the best teams in the country that'll be here, and uh, we're really excited to get that going. The teams been working hard on the plans and and all the logistics that go with that. But I think if we can really, uh, you know, rely on, you know, the student body, the the student unions, the OTSU and, and DCSA to really help to uh, to generate that interest from the fan, from the students, that's uh, that'd be excellent because it's a, a great way to, to showcase the, the campus spirit for sure. And no pressure, Scott, but last time a soccer national championship yeah. was held on campus, was Durham College and they happened to win it. That's so true. no pressure for there the home go. team to win. And, and there was also a giant snowfall that oh. time as well. So I remember being out on the field shoveling snow in the morning. So we were, hopefully there's no hopefully snowfall, but hopefully the Ridgebacks can win it all. Yes. We, 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 we do remember the shoveling for sure. <laughs> and the, the added pressure of that is the last two national championships at the university level, uh, the home team has also been victorious. So there okay. is uh, there's some home field advantage that we can take advantage of, right? So hopefully. Yeah, so well, hopefully all of the Durham region and all the students turn out to cheer. I know I'll be there. When I don't bleed green and gold, I will bleed orange and blue. So <laughs> there we go. Well, and you're not alone in hosting a Nationals no. this year. So we are hosting volleyball. Let's talk about that. Yep. Yeah, so March 5th to 9th, it's the CCAA uh, Women's Volleyball Championship. It's actually the 50th year for CCAA sports. So it's a, an anniversary championship Ooh. as well. Um, top eight teams, similar to soccer, is going to be on campus. We're going to host it in gyms one and two. We'll have to bring in some additional seating. As you know, we hosted the OCAA Men's Basketball Championship yes. and sold out night one for Humber versus Durham. So, uh, yeah, we anticipate big crowds there. It's a great volleyball community, and uh, some of the top volleyball players in Canada are coming here in March. So, And we're I'll also throwing a plug for a provincial championship we're hosting, the OCAA Women's Softball Championship in October yes. at Babcock Field. And our women's softball team always has a, a very competitive team, so... We're hoping uh, they can bring home the championship. I'm as hoping well. they can bring it home and too. You'll have lots of support on on our side because, as people may not may or may not know, we don't have volleyball as a program at the university. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of uh, supporters who are into volleyball that come out to watch the Lord. So it's I'm I'm really excited that they're hosting that championship as well because we don't have that opportunity on our side because of the uh, the fact we don't have that as as a program or a sport. So. Yeah, it's going to look really good. So speaking of not having sports, let's dive into um, a little bit of a different conversation. Are you going to look to put volleyball in your offerings in the future? So it's, uh, it's I would say it's probably the most popular request of the big sports. Um, so the answer is hopefully yes, down the road. Um, as you can appreciate, there's a lot that goes into to adding, adding new sports to making yes. sure they're sustainable and making sure you've got all the, the, the pieces in place to make it make it work. Um, one of our biggest challenges is uh, is space. So facility-wise, we don't want to be taking away um, gym time or space from our general student population for recreation and, and programming. So we do have to look at strategies as to where a new varsity team could play. But, uh, but like I said, volleyball is one of my favorite sports. Uh, it's a very popular ask from the students. So it is something that we have to really explore and look at and, and uh, strategically uh, find ways to to hopefully bring on board down the road. No. Okay. Any inklings of extra sports offering? I know we just got curling. Yeah, so curling is going to make its debut. Um, on the extramural side for recreation, uh, there is going to be a ringette team. Okay. And then um, we're talking about volleyball and a sitting volleyball team as well. Yes. And we plan on hosting the first ever sitting volleyball championship between colleges and universities. Uh, in conjunction with the CCAA Volleyball Championship. So lots of new offerings uh, from the extramural side as well. And okay. cross country. As well. Oh, cross country running, yes. Oh, so yes. that'll be a shared new venture this year as a sport club that uh, both DC and Ontario Tech students can, uh, can sign up for. Okay, I will not be signing up for that. I am not a runner, no, but I you, like the idea. You are on the rugby team, though, <laughs> I, right? So. I only run when I have to run away from somebody, so it's a big difference, <laughs> but go. no, that's really cool. So we have two very strong athletic programs. What are your goals for this year in terms of just improving upon the experiences of the previous years? Um, so we talk about the athletic programs. We obviously have the varsity side. Um, we've seen a lot of success there. But it's the the recreation side that I like to see grow as well. So just getting a student involved that maybe has not been out to the gym to come out to the gym. We just got 
brand new equipment in the Flex Center. We've got nothing but great reviews. I don't know, I've heard nothing but great things as well. So getting getting all the students on campus active, whether that's at the Whippy campus, Oshawa campus, or downtown Oshawa campus, just finding some way someone can get involved in making their experience at the college and university a memorable one. Yeah. And then I would think from the, you know, from you looking at from a standpoint of the competitive side, uh, I think one thing that both Scott and I are very aligned on and we're always trying to, to build upon is, um, <clears throat> Culture within a high performance environment is a very important uh, aspect to a successful um, varsity uh, operation. So, you know, we're always looking to look at, you know, what happened last year. How can we improve upon uh, the culture that we have, which is, I think, very strong between both between both schools, right down from the the student athletes to the administrative support staff to the coaches to our roles. Like we want to make sure that everyone understands and feels a part of the environment. They are a part of a family, whether it's the Lord's family, the Ridgeback family. Um, and I think from a high performance standpoint, we're always pushing the envelope to say, how can we be leaders in high performance and finding the best coaches, finding the best staff, looking at the best ways to uh, compete at that level, but also at the same time, how are we educating the student athletes on what high performance is? You know, nutrition, taking care of your body, proper rest. It's not just about showing up to a practice and then hopping on a bus and going to a game. We want them to understand what it means to be a, a varsity athlete and what it means to be a competitive athlete. So that might actually help them down the road if they have opportunities to pursue professional opportunities or you know whatever the case might be in, in their next chapter, right? So it's uh, I think we both look at that in the same same line and uh, uh, similarly as we do with the recreation. So it's really a, uh, a holistic approach to how we can build upon what we did last year. I don't know about you, Megan, but I watched the Olympics all summer, and there was an yes. interview with the, the women's basketball player after they got eliminated. It was a pretty emotional interview, but she talked about how it wasn't just them, it was everybody behind them that contributed to their journey to get there. And like Scott says, he mentioned nutrition, things like that. There's a whole team behind the varsity athletes and, uh, yeah, the whole family as well. So, And yeah. look at the number of athletes at the Olympics that have college, university, post-secondary backgrounds. Like, there's... A number of them that have come through the system of post-secondary and now they're at the olympics so yeah. we want to make sure that we're the ones helping to drive that mentality of a high performance athlete so they have those opportunities and they're prepared for when they get to those chances yeah definitely as an athlete in our programs i feel supported um it's crazy the amount of resources and the amount of people that we have behind us so we each get full athletic therapy teams that are dedicated to our teams we get meals we get support we have resources mental health resources our health care plans our full um like health and wellness clinic that we have on campus that's a few steps away from all of our training facilities our dedicated ets staff like i don't think it gets much better than what you guys provide for our athletes here and i'm very grateful because I don't have to run to over here to go to physiotherapy or over here to go to chiropractic or over here for like my mental health. Like it's all available to me on campus. And I think that just speaks to the strong level of commitment that you guys provide to us here on campus. And I think, I think it's working because we have a lot of very successful teams and a lot of athletes who are drawn to our programs because of the good offerings that you guys have created and the strong support and staff that you've built up behind it. So, I mean, hats off to both of you for, you know, driving that varsity culture and making sure that it's a safe space for all of your athletes. I appreciate that. And I think we'd be remiss to suggest to you, like, it doesn't just st stop with us. I mean, we have two institutions at the senior leadership level that support and understand what it means and the value that athletics and recreation has on a campus right so it's it makes our jobs easier knowing that we have the support from the upper leadership that is uh, understanding why and what we're doing and, and the the importance of it so but i appreciate what you're saying and you mentioned a lot of services that are, that are available to all students regardless right. if you're an athlete or not right so it's about the campus coming together to support students for sure mm -hmm. You spoke about high performance and athletes going from the college university level to the Olympics. You're going to the <laughs> university games, winter yeah, university games. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so it's uh, the FISU games or the university Olympics is uh, it's sort of a, I would say it's sort of a hidden, a hidden gem. Like I didn't know too much about it until I got into the university system. But uh, essentially, that's exactly what it is. It's it's a, a university Olympics for post secondary uh, student athletes and. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to Torino in uh, in January for 
three weeks. And uh, I'm the director of operations for Team Canada. Um, so it's, uh, it's gonna be an awesome learning experience for myself and uh, to be able to represent Canada is something that everyone sort of dreams of. And so uh, being able to be a part of helping athletes that are uh, competing with the Maple Leaf on their chest is, uh, is something I'm really, really proud to be a part of and, and really looking forward to ga gaining that experience. So maybe there'll be more opportunities down the road for other, other places as well, but uh, can't complain, Italy's Really not beautiful. not a bad place to go. I mean, it'll be January, but I'll I'll, I'll take it. So it'll, <laughs> it'll be in the mountains. I'll be in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's it for our interview. Do you guys have any other comments or things that you'd like to share before we head out? No, I'm just uh, thank you for doing the the podcast. It's the first episode, but I can't wait to watch the uh, future episodes where you have athletes on. Yes. Uh, great way to showcase our athletes. So, so thanks for stepping up and doing that, Megan. Of course, I'm yeah. excited to talk to them. And I just, being a Lord, excuse me for speaking directly for the Lords, but being a Lords athlete is so much fun. I think we've really developed a good camaraderie between all of the teams. And, you know, I walk down the hallway and I see someone from softball or I see someone from soccer and you're smiling. And I, I'm sure that's the same for all of the Ridgeback athletes. So I'm excited to bring the varsity experience to the people and let them see like what it is behind the scenes. We work really hard, but we also have a good time. Time. So I think it's going to be a good year of content. That's what it's all about, right? It's Friends for life, right? Friends so. for life, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, this has been the first episode of The Lord's Last Play. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. <laughs>